up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So Abyss of the Goth just dropped on all platforms, like two minutes ago. And we're going to be going over the full patch notes. Reminder, a lot of this stuff is extremely, like, wordy and detailed, so I'll be giving you, like, a, a flyover of all this information. So if you don't want to know every little detail, this is the right video for you. Also, we'll be showing, you know, High Drudge Rework as well in some future videos and tons of other items in this update and videos over the next couple days. So you're in the right place for Warframe content. Make sure you're subbed and also hit that like button so more people can see this video, hopefully, and, you know, all that good stuff. Let's get right into it. We got 77 pages of patch notes. Uh, and let's also quickly go ahead and buy Dagoth and her bundle over here. Okay, so look at the first things first. The Dagoth bundle, 580 plat. It's going to come with the goth frame, her alternate helmet, her special weapon, and some uh, Kaith cosmetics. So 580 plat. You do save a good chunk of plat if you do buy this bundle, obviously. Uh, that would be, a, you know, you'd probably save about 200 plat, say, at the end of the day. As far as the goth animations, got a nice creepy one right here with the agile animation. And the noble animation looking looking like you got the... Trying to figure out what to do with your hands, honestly. All right, so we got Hydra Jerk equipped. Before we hop on the patch notes, let's go ahead and see what does hit. I need to. I need to see it right now. What does Plunder scale with? Does Plunder scale with strength? <gasps> plunder does scale with strength. Okay, so the maximum corrosive value of Plunder is affected by power strength, uh, as is the damage buff you get per corrosive proc and just a bunch of stuff. So strength mods on Hydroid will be good. I might have to actually you know put more strength on Hydroid in the future. So that's good. We'll, we'll go over that soon. I think Triple Threat Hydroid might be great with Nourish giving viral damage, Plunder giving corrosive, and you throw in some gas on your Czar or whatever, and you'll be good to go. All right, let's hop right into these patch notes, though, because we got a lot to go over. All right, so I'm like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a brief overview of every single thing on these 77 patch notes, so keep that in mind. All right, so the new update, Abyss of the Goth, is going to have the, the Goth frame, obviously, we just showed her. And uh, the way you're going to obtain the goth, there's going to be a dojo room uh, that you're going to build called uh, the Abyssal Crypt or something like that. And what you're going to, the way you're going to build that, just go to your dojo, have room in your dojo to build this. It takes normal resources to build the dojo room, um, but actually after that, you're going to get this new resource that comes from these uh, Abyssal Zones. The way you do these Abyssal Zones, you have to go to your normal syndicates, so like New Loka, Parent Sequence, Steel Meridian, blah blah blah. Those syndicates will have special Oric, okay, what are they called? Orican Era Diffioxios, or <laughs> Defiox. I don't know how to say that. Uh, and you will go into the ship with this, the, the special mission, the Abyssal Zone. And basically, and they're thinking of like a sabotage mix and exterminate. You're going to do an exterminate as normal. Once you get through, you're going to find this little red thing. And that will be, it will basically give you a special modifier after picking it up. So you'll get things like Phantom Curse, Gravity is Reduced, Scarcity Ammo, your ammo depletes steadily, Battery Charge, Weapons Recharge Slowly. So... It's going to be a little twist on Exterminate. Don't expect too much out of it. Don't expect, like, big, big rewards. The main thing here will be the resource to build the goth in your dojo room uh, that you should go make room for. If you didn't already make room for it, you're going to have to make room for it soon if you want it. Um, additionally, uh, nearing the required amount of slant enemies will trigger reinforcements, calling an Eximus Stronghold. So basically think of it like an Exterminate for the first half of it. Once you pick up this thing, you'll get a, a special modifier. Once it's, like, the last third of the mission, it'll become an Eximus Stronghold. And there will also be a Steel Path modifier uh, with enhanced, uh, enhanced chance they have Grenier Nox reinforcements. And there's a new resource that you're going to get. Completing the mission will give you 6 to 8 Vein Thorns, or 8, 11, and 12 on the Steel Path. It takes about 34 Vein Thorns to build one Dagoth part, just to give you an estimate of how long this will take. So you're not going to really be having to farm too much to get Dagoth, as long as you have the Dojo Room. Uh, the Frame Dagoth is going to be good. We'll have a build video on her probably tomorrow. Uh, but just going off her abilities really quick, passive, like a mini arc and energize, word sights, her first ability is basically like a viral aqua blade with a little bit of extra effects too. Her second ability is called Doom, it's a debuff that can spread to nearby enemies. Grave Spirit is a crit damage buff for her, and when she dies, she comes well, she basically becomes a ghost and doesn't actually die. The ability goes in cooldown. And Rakali's cavalry is just like the four horsemen of the apocalypse come and just run every enemy over, and it does a lot of damage. And her helmet looks cool. I like her alt helmet. Here's her new weapon, the Door Clave. It's going to be in the Dagoth room as well, so you're going to need that Dagoth room for sure, guys. Uh, the special effect of this will be after um, 10 kills or assists, you get guaranteed uh, status effects for the next 10 attacks. So that's good. You're going to have tons and tons of slash procs. 
and that'll be on top of your already modded status chance. So we're going to also have Grendel Prime. Uh, probably not going to cover him immediately, like the day after, but uh, I am actually going to decide. I don't know if I want to buy this ephemera or not. It looks pretty cool, but also I need a better look at it. I don't like their green color choice on this. So maybe I'll pick that up because I, I just use, I use private ephemeras a lot, to be honest. His accessories are going to be the uh, Cyandana and that, that ephemera. He's also going to have the uh, Zylocke Prime and the Massateur Prime. Harrow Prime, Scourge Prime, Nell Prime are all vaulted now. Don't expect Hero Prime to become expensive, though, because he is, like, one of the cheapest frames in the game. And there's new in-game bundles. We just showed that. There's a new Nidus Void Shell skin, also going to be one for Mirage and Protea. So I should take a look at those, too. Uh, and also we've got some new glyphs, of course. Why it wouldn't be a Warframe update without new glyphs? we got some new cosmetics. Looks pretty nice. The Owl Spawn Cyandana. I might actually use that. we got a Vampire Lotus skin. This is going to cost plat. Keep that in mind. New Day of the Dead collection. Ooh, Cycron Day of the Dead skin. I might have to get that. Exceltra Day of the Dead skin, too. Nice, nice. Okay. New Day of the Dead armor pieces. New color. 1003 color palette. Nice. I'll have to pick that one up, too. Okay, so here we get into the stuff that was all in the dev workshops. So I'm going to give you the brief, brief overview of this stuff. I'll be testing this extensively on stream today. If you want to come stop by the live stream, please do. Um, so big things here. Shields are going to have more damage reduction at base. They used to be 25, now it's going to be 50% at base, so Hildren stalks go up. The shield recharge mods, Fast Deflection, Fortitude, and Vigilant uh, Vigor are going to be buffed a lot. So look for Fast Deflection potentially being a new semi-meta mod. We're going to have to test it to see if it actually is good. Shield getting is getting changed. You watched my video yesterday, you're going to know that basically overshields are cheating uh, for the time being. I, don't even, I didn't see, are there, is there anything about overshields in here? Well, if you watch my video from yesterday, Pablo basically said overshields are not supposed to work with shield getting the way that they're going to be working right now. There's this new mod, Catalyzing Shields, which will be available in an alert for the next week. Uh, let's go see if that alert is actually active. Ooh, I can't believe Hydroids Plunder Skills of Strength. I'm so happy about that. All right, let's go see if the alert is active for Catalyzing Shields yet. Okay, Catalyzing Shields Survival Alert is active right now, guys, so... Uh, that's going to be available for an entire week. So if you want to get this new mod guaranteed, it will be added to the Corrupted Vault. It probably already is in Corrupted Vaults, actually. Go do this alert. It's going to be a, I think, a 13 drain. Let's see if they changed it since the uh, since the patch notes we saw. So going to Universe, Mods. I can just link it in game, actually, right? Yep, Catalyzing Shields. Let's see if they changed it since the Dev Workshop. Okay, it's just got a new picture. It is not an Exilus mod from what I'm seeing right here, so... Yeah, you're going to have to uh, make room on your build for that. Let's just say, uh, take off the weakest mod and put that mod in the same place. Uh, but continuing on, uh, so yeah, that alert is active for the next week. Uh, shield getting will scale with how much shields you have. By the way, guys, please, okay, I, this is your PSA. Take this decaying dragon key off right now. You can't play the system, okay? The decaying dragon key is bad. It is officially bad for shield getting now. They, it, it's done, all right? It had its time to shine. It's done now. Goodbye, decaying dragon key. Uh, if you want to do the same thing as before, just put, equip this new mod, and then you can, uh, yeah. We've got some stat squishes. So mods like Vitality used to say 440% health. Now they do plus 100% health. But it's just how the background math is applied. The mods did not get nerfed. They actually got buffed for, in some cases. Um, base health and stats have been altered on Warframes across the board. And there's going to be a lot. There's, there's a lot of stuff in here. So mod changes, a uh, ton of mod changes. Arcwing changes too, who cares? Focus lens conversion. Focus lenses will give you more focus now. Like, for example, the most powerful lens before the Lua lens gave 3.25. Now it gives 5.5. So big buff there. And all the yellow orbs now give you a flat 5K focus when you pick it up. That's great. So if you don't have focus maxed out, there you go. Nightwave changes. So a lot of these nightwave changes are not going to happen until next nightwave. And we don't get a new nightwave for a while. Uh, but yeah, basically they're cleaning up some old crappy axe. Adding some new ones. There's a new introductory Nightwave screen. If you haven't played in a while, like here, here's what Nightwave is. Uh, break. So call missions got some changes. I'll test those out. They'll, that will not be a top priority though. I'm sure you guys all know why. Um, call changes. Arch Archon damage. Uh, one shot changes. Let's see. We'll, we'll see if we can still one shot. I'll ask some people that like to one shot them. I'll actually probably try to one shot them myself too. Uh, new player remove uh, path for improvements. Remove flaw mods. There's a bunch of stuff on here that's going to be for new players for sure. Mark 1 weapons are still in the game, just removed from the uh, the Vor's Prize quest. So your Mark 1 weapons are still on your account, guys. Okay, Vor, uh, so they changed like some of the really early game quests. Not very important to me. Universal Enemy Radar, all frames 
now have built-in enemy radar of 30 meters, and that will stack with enemy radar mods. And Ivarak mains, please, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. They're not, you're not getting a new pass. They will stack with this, okay? So Ivara has a ton of enemy radar at base. Um, too bad. I mean, I, I would like Ivara to have a new passive, but it's okay. Lots of passives in this game are actually pretty bad. Um, so we got some new ra Wave Rider changes. Who cares? If you, have, if you haven't done the Wave Rider quest, there you go. Okay, here's some stuff that was not in the previous dev workshops. Uh, boss fight changes. Ambulus reduced round timer from 2 minutes to 90 seconds. Oh my gosh. Ambulus was literally a fight I would refuse to ever do. So yeah, they reduced the time on Ambulus by a lot. That fight would take like 12 minutes before. And they're cutting it out a massive amount, so good for them. Um, I might actually do it if it's a coup of flood now. Nah, no way. <laughs> uh, Vayhek reduced invincibility time from 10 to 6 seconds. That's great. I had a big waste of time with Vayhek the other day. Um, increased maximum damage received before invulnerable from 25 to 35. Uh, Till Rigor, now waypoints disappears when he is hiding. Oh, that's that's like a nerf, basically. <laughs> Added waypoints to Manix while they're active. Okay, yeah, Till Rigor had some annoying parts, too. See this Wisp and Necromex. Big thing here, Necromex only take Dimos resources now. So you can build your entire Necromex just farming out Dimos. Just go no life it, basically. That's a great change. I don't know why I wasn't like that before. Uh, character highlighting system. You can now like mark enemies and specific uh, items as with a red highlight or like whatever. So I'm going to probably use that just to make it even more mindless. Um, so that's cool. So you got plenty of settings on that. You can make your cat green. You can make the enemy blue. You can make yourself brown or whatever. So like, yeah, go for it. Um, all right. So icons on the map. There's some, some improvements to icons on the map for like hunting and all that. That's stuff that I'm hopefully not going to have to do ever again. Auto melee was added. So this is great. This is going to make light attack melee weapons even better. So dual Iker and Karnan, great. Anku and Karnan, great. Uh, you know, all the good light attack melees, like every, basically any dual sword, uh, great here. So you basically hold the button down and you just attack. You just do the combo attacks. You're going to, of course, be able to press the uh, heavy attack button still too. So that's great. Uh, just easy mode activated, basically. Uh, buffs and debuffs, so some improvements to your UI for all those buffs. When you're playing Octavia, you can actually read what's going on. Update history stream. Um, okay, and that's how you're going to find it. So, yeah, just a bunch of stuff for the UI here. You can change Incarnon perks in your arsenal. Let me go do this real quick, just because I've wanted to do this for a while, okay? So, I, I probably have an Incarnon equipped, right? Yeah, dual Icar right here. Oh, yeah. Swap that Incarnon perk. Oh, yeah. I can switch all of them. That's so great. Very cool. Very cool. That should have been there at launch, honestly. But, hey, you know what? It's here now. I'm not going to complain. So that's a very big quality of life. You, you don't have to have two Ceramic Dagger Incarnons or whatever. Uh, new damage number for non-critical. So you can, there's more damage number settings again. Railjet crew members can be customized. I wonder if they nerfed Railjet crew members. <laughs> I don't see any nerfs in here on those. Um, companion rework. Okay, so this is phase one of the companion rework. Uh, big things here. Companions will no longer fully die. They will just basically be in dead hangout mode until they come back from the dead. Uh, also, as far as coming back from the dead, there's these new bond mods. Uh, that We actually are going to have 14 of them. They actually are showing them all of them here right now. Or are they? Here, here's a couple of them. Okay, yeah. So here we go. So the mods that will be coming from the... See this guy. We're going to have four of them. One of them's called Tandem Bond. Companion melee hits increase your combo by six. Heavy attacks increase companion melee damage by 30% of melee damage multiplied by your combo multiplied for 30 seconds. So um, heavy attacks increase companion melee damage by 30%. Okay, good. Hey. I mean, Buck is in a, Buck already one shots like Eximus. So, okay. Um, this will take up a mod slot on your build list, to remind you. Covert Bond. Finishers and Mercy kills Greater Companion. 10 seconds of stealth. The attack will not disrupt up to 60 seconds. Finishers and Mercy kills. So I wonder if Ash's fourth ability will count for this to make it so you have a permanently invisible dog. That could be pretty good with Buck, the uh, basically the slash dog. Mystical Bond. After your companion uses the ability with cooldown, with cooldowns five times, you can cast a warp from ability without spending energy. That sounds pretty bad. So you're saving up, like let's let's say realistically, okay, on frost, your fourth ability costs 100 energy. After your companion uses an ability with cooldown five times, you get one free ability cast. This one's bad. This one's bad. Uh, restorative bot. Health orbs restore 60 more health and reduce companion recovery by three seconds. Oh. That's going to be basically permanent uptime for your companion. Very nice. 
Uh, because remember, also, if you watch my previous videos, Equilibrium is being buffed. You'll be able to pick up health orbs at full health. So this is... Restore to Bond might be one of the better ones. That comes from Cetus. Okay. The Fortuna Bond mods. You've got Aerial Bond, Airborne Kills, Decrease Companion Recovery Time by 3 seconds, and 9 seconds for Headshot Kill. Companions create a field of cold that increases up to 35% status chance and, and 10 meter radius while War Warframe is Airborne, lasting for 3 seconds. Okay, so basically an increased status chance zone and getting headshot kills will reduce its death timer. Because the companions will have a respawn timer now and will no longer fully die. Astro Bond. Damage dealt by Operator or Drifter grants 120% void damage to your companion's attacks for 10 seconds. Companion void damage adds 30% amp efficiency, amp and energy efficiency to Operator and or Drifter for 5 seconds. So, if you want your companion to do void damage for some reason, this is how you do it. That's going to be a Bond mod. Momentous Bond. Killing Eximus grants 120% bonus of a random element to your companion for 30 seconds and reduces companion recovery for, by 12 seconds. Killing an Eximus gives 120% random elemental damage. Random, huh? So if it gets like a cold proc, I'm just screwed, I guess. Uh, that one sounds interesting, but the fact it's RNG and which element you get kind of makes it not as great to me. Uh, reinforced Bond. If companion exceeds 1,200 maximum shields or overshields, then your fire rate decreases by 60%. Reloading restores 150 overshields to your companion. That's a lot of fire rate. Um, if you can give them 100, if you can get them 100 or 1200 max overshield somehow, uh, if you're playing like Protea or maybe Hildren or something, uh, tenacious bond headshot kills reduce companion recovery time by three seconds. Companion's critical chance is over 50 percent. Then you gain 0.6 per. Oh my gosh! Final crit chance multiplier. Uh, okay, final crit chance multiplier sounds pretty. Or crit damage multiplier sounds pretty good, but that's a very damage focused one right there. We'll have to see if that's actually worth it. Duplex Bond, the one that makes clones out of your companion. Might have a video on that soon. Seismic Bond, with a channel ability active. Companion melee attacks create a 4 meter shockwave of 30% of their melee damage. Damage by your companion increases your ability efficiency by 3% for 12 seconds. Sex, a max of 10 stacks. So, your basically gives your companion melee AoE attacks. So for a buck with a slash, a slash procs, this could potentially be kind of cool. Vicious Bond, companion melee attacks strip 50% of the enemy's armor. Melee attacks on this enemy, recently damaged by abilities, apply the effect in a 9 meter radius. So AoE armor strip um, for your companion on melee attacks. Uh, I, I, the thing is, I'm using slash procs, so that shouldn't really matter. Contagious Bond. This one, okay, I already saw this one before. This one sounds really good. When your companion kills an enemy affected by a, with a status effect, a 50% chance of the status effect spreading to nearby enemies within 9 meters. So with mecha bonus on top of this, mecha and contagious bond, AoE slash procs for bug. Manifold, and the last one we got here, Manifold Bond. Uh, these, by the way, these ones are from Sun in the Deimos uh, Necrolisk. Companion preset mod applies status effects from companion weapons. Killing enemies with three or more unique status effects reduces companion ability cooldowns by three seconds. Okay, so it looks like that one's still being worked on. We are aware some of our companions will not trigger the bonus status effect. Okay. What is it? Preset mods. Okay, so this one's broken. Manifold Bond is not working properly, so just keep that in mind. Um, but I'm looking to use Contagious Bond anyway. Uh, for the Companion Quality of Life, okay, so there's some little things in here like Arson Eximus will no longer damage the Sentinels if you are able to dodge it. And we get the Hydroid rework here. So big things for Hydroid. His new passive, he is a new Corrosive Pirate King. I was just showing you his abilities in the Arsenal screen. All his abilities do Corrosive damage now in base. As you can see in Tentacle Swarm, Corrosive damage. Um... It's got status chance, I believe. Oh, no, it doesn't. Uh, so we'll have to see how fast he's getting his corrosive procs out. But yeah, all his abilities are corrosive now. And his new passive is that whenever... He, he can basically fully remove enemy armor with corrosive procs and just weapons. And technically just abilities. His first corrosive proc removes 50% of the enemy's armor. So yeah, he's looking pretty good right now. Um, I'm going to do a Hydroid rework video in the next couple days. So if you want a deep dive build video out of me, you're in the right place. Well, actually, you're, not, you're in the right place. You're not in the right time, though, because... I can't record three videos at a time, unfortunately. Okay, so we got some Drifter cosmetic stuff. Uh, controller changes. Explosive. Okay, look out for this. Explosive barrels might actually kill us now. <coughs> Be careful about this. Explosive barrels now deal a percentage of the enemy's maximum health uh, to help them scale with higher level content. Be careful, though, because this might blow us up, too. Um, we'll have to see that. Uh, wait. Wait. Spent Radium Barrels now deal Radiation status effects. Oh, for enemies. I was about to say, why are we getting Rad Proc Barrels, DE? Because uh, Rad Procs can prevent, or, uh, allow self-damage and also, like, or not self-damage, they allow teammate shooting 
in this game. So let's not put those in missions. Uh, added two new reward options to the Steel Pass circuit, Rivens and Kuva. So basically you can, uh, if you have a Rifter level 9 intrinsic, you can do, basically this is a recommendation, or well, some, somewhat a recommendation, I made and they implemented off of, I, I hope my video and some player feedback, uh, you can actually go here to the Steel Path circuit and you can apparently pick the, you, you can pick to just not get this. Okay. Ah, so this is how it works. This is nice. Okay, so I can pick, oh, you can only pick the same, I can't pick Kuva twice. Um, that's cool. Okay, so if you don't want it in the card, you can pick this stuff instead. Very cool. Um, I guess I'm going to go with like a, let's go with a melee one because of the new melee for Dagoth. So as you can see right now, I it, I have all the Incarnons in the game. I don't need an Incarnon at level 5 or level 10. So this means I'm not wasting my time entirely. I'm just wasting my time on rank 3 and rank 4 because it's, these are just resources. So nice change there, DE. I like how you did it. 20,000 Kuva is all right, I suppose. Um, but yeah, very cool. Step in the right direction. How about that? So new changes. Okay, so there's really... I've already known a couple of these things. One of the things, guys, Thermal Sunder Helmuth from Gauss got nerfed. But not a ton. It just basically, if you're spamming it really, really hard, it doesn't do as much damage as actual Gauss's helm. The ability itself is still going to be the same. You're still going to be like annoyed that the Titania is killing every level 5 enemy in your Lift Fissure uh, from across the map. That's still going to be a thing. It basically it was only going to affect uh, people that are using macros to spam Thermal Sunder really, really hard. But yeah, going over a couple of these changes right here. Ground Finishers now ignore armor value of enemies as other finishers do. Basically just Ground Finisher quality of life stuff here. Uh, Ulfren's Descent, uh, so basically Varuna's fourth ability now counts as a melee for Lycat's Hunt. That's good. That was one of the biggest problems with Varuna's ultimate was that, well, first off, you don't walk around as a dog, you're, do you're not in dog mode, first off. You're walking around as a frame, even though you look like you should walk around in dog mode. Let's not talk about that right now. Uh, the ability did not count as a melee, and Lycat's Hunt, Varuna's third ability, likes melees to give you orbs and stuff. So they've changed it where Ulfren's Defense is now a melee attack, so that's great. Um, okay, some other things here. Uh, you're going to have better UI feedback when you get overshield health and all that kind of stuff, so that's great. Um, so here's the one. Buffs. Uh, equilibrium is now is buffed. Uh, Pick up a health orb or energy orb can be triggered if your health or energy pools have max. This includes mods like Equilibrium. That's good. If your buffs are fully stacked, you will no longer pick up these orbs at max health or energy. If your buffs are fully stacked. Hmm. I'll, we'll have to look at that and see if they, that's exactly the way I wanted it to. Orican Vault on Dymos can now be highlighted by the Orican. Oh my gosh, that's a big change. So the Orican Eye uh, Landing Craft ability can now mark or uh, the, Dy the Dymos Dragon Key Vaults. That's going to be massive, massive upgrade. So guys, get the Parallax if you don't have it already. The Parallax Landing Craft. It lets you scan the area for rare stuff. It will now work on Dymos uh, Dragon Vaults for like Blind Rage and all that stuff. That's really cool. It just makes it so it's easier to find those vaults. There will be uh, Maybe I'll make a new, a new uh, vault farming video after that because that's going to be a big, big change. Uh, just an auto install. So auto install is better now. Ash can now teleport to defense objectives with his third ability so it can stalker technically. Okay. Uh, entry, entry be burst. Okay, who cares about that? So there's some, some little things in here. Here's the here's the nerf the thermal sunder by the way. Okay, so uh, change thermal sunder helmet ability to have an altered attribute of scaling from heat status on enemies capped to 12, 10x ability damage. So basically, people were spamming it really, really, really hard. It was basically making people AFK the game. It was that OP. So they've changed that, but you can still do it on Gauss technically. So yeah, there you go. Uh, just you won't be able to use it on like Hero or, or uh, Hero or Garuda the way you were before. Thankfully. Oh my gosh, they changed the wording of Bane mods. Look at this. It used to say was plus three percent damage to Corpus. Now times one point three damage to Corpus. Now maybe people will understand that Bane mods are pretty good if you're actually willing to like, you know, have a headache to switch your builds around every mo uh, mission. So let's see what we got here. Times one point five five damage to Grenier. Does that look better than before? It definitely does to me. So very cool there. Uh, let's see if I have a Bane Riven. Can I check a Bane Riven here? Um, which Riven do I have that has a Bane? I think my Anku one. Actually, no. I think my, my Dual Licker has a negative Bane. Let's see that. Okay. It doesn't really look like a negative anymore, though. Uh, so negative Corpus says times 0 0.61 damage to Corpus now. Okay. I, I guess that is... Make, it just doesn't look... It looks weird on the Riven, honestly. So... Whatever, that's cool. Um, it will hopefully let people understand that Bane mods are extremely powerful uh, if you want the headache of changing mods every other mission. 
Okay, so a couple more things on here. Um, not, nothing really of value here. So we got some fixes here. I'm not gonna go through every little fix, uh, but looks like there's gonna be quite a few things. Let's, let's hope that they fix a bunch of those Incarnons uh, that are not working properly. Let's see, Control F, Incarnon. Okay, um, let's just, I'm looking for Incarnon fixes here. Fix Gorgon and Karnon. Fix weapons the Karnon Genesis not being offered it as options in Teshin's cave. That's weird. Uh, galvanized Amplitude. The, okay, so the Telos Boltor got fixed. Wow. Took you. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, so the Telos Boltor bug is fixed. Dreading Karnon not expending its remaining charge. I was wondering about that. Um, okay. Fixed Dreading Karnon Stalker perk. Resetting if any arrow is missed, this has been changed to get you much more forgiving and now reset if all arrows miss. Okay, cool. So multi-shot won't screw you over with the Dread Incarnate anymore. That's great. Okay. Fixed Bratton's Preload of Might always apply. Okay, it looks like they're trying to hunt down some of these little these little things with like the Incarnon Bratton. So uh, the Furious one still works, by the way, Pablo. So yeah, okay, we got lots of lots of Incarnon fixes, it looks like. Um, but people, I mean, sure people will call that a nerf. But uh, yeah, the, the Bratton always applying was not not supposed to be that way. So very cool. I'm going to definitely uh, be on stream very soon, guys. So Hydra's looking good. Plunder's looking good. Um, we already got a hot fix somehow, too. So yeah, I will see you guys in another video very soon. I appreciate all support. Uh, go get your Hydroid farmed up. Go get your easy to farm to goth uh, frame and get that Doja room put together. All right, guys. Appreciate all support. I didn't look at the Void Shell skins, but we'll save that for on stream, okay? Come by the top of the stream later in like probably like an hour. Or actually, more like a half hour. All right, guys, take it easy. Peace.